Okay, good morning. Today I want to talk about one of the most mysterious aspects of this investigation in the entire case, and that is the boots. Now when I say the boots, everybody knows that I'm talking about Brenda Condon's boots that were found in the bathroom. So let's start back and think about my interview that I had with Todd Condon, Brenda's son. And he stated that she would change from her boots to sneakers when she would clean, okay? Now we can leave it go there and say that that's what happened. Yet I, I'm not willing to do that as of yet. I still have some feelers out there um, to some people in regards to a lot of things in this case, but in particular the boots, um, how they were found, they were placed neatly together, pointing in a certain direction, um, whether one was found on the south wall, one was found on the north wall, whether they were tipped over. Now you say, Kenny, why does that matter? Well. It, because I think it could paint a picture much better. Whether there was control um, or whether there was panic, conflict. Yeah, you're not going to know 100%. But what I like to do is take the totality of everything. And it helps explain single incidents. You know what I mean? Like, if we know for sure the back door was open, um, let's and let's say, for instance, and this isn't the case, but let's say a kitchen knife was found on the floor outside the men's bathroom, and her boots were on opposite sides of the bathroom, tilted over. Because of those three things, singularly, right, as a, as if you take it as a single event, doesn't mean anything. But you couple all of them together, then you're, you have an abduction, okay? So that's why I think it's important to know that. So I have a couple of feelers out there to try to find out about the boots and how they were placed. Now... If I go by the assumption that I have since 1991, when I first learned about this case, is that the boots were just placed side by side, normally right inside the door of the bathroom. I can't take that for gospel because I don't know for sure. But right now in the investigation, that's how I'm taking it. So if we do that, there's a couple of things that we can deduce, I think, right away. Number one, they were her favorite boots. And I know this from talking to Bonnie, if you remember that, best friend, and Iris, Brenda's sister. And she would wear them to bartend. The heels on them, you know, some say that that's an issue. She wouldn't wear them. But listen, you're on the outside looking in, right? The people that are in the inside, best friend, son, sibling, they will know more than you. That's a fact. So 
I will take their words for that. Those were Brenda's favorite pair of boots, and she would wear them to bartend. Now remember, she only bartended there two or three times. I think two or three times in her whole life. But being found where they are, I think we can start deducing some things right off the bat. Um, number one is that they were pro I think we can deduce that they were placed there after last call. Okay. So how can we deduce that? Well, why would Brenda put her, if she did it on her own accord, why would she put her boots in the men's bathroom? Why there were still patrons in there who would walk in and use the restroom, right? Let's say at the beginning of her shift, let's say she's on her feet and she's like, oh, my feet are sore. I'm going to put on my sneakers. I can see that happening. But she wouldn't take those boots and put them in the men's bathroom then, right? She would only do that after there was no more customers in the bar. If she did it at the beginning of her shift, she would just place them behind the bar or in an office or even take them out to her car, right? But she's not going to put them in the men's bathroom. That I know. That's during the normal shift. Now. Once last call hits and there's no more customers in the bar, if she puts her boots in the men's bathroom, now I'll, I'll buy into that. Okay. Then the question becomes why, right? And again, we go back to Todd's interview and he says, well, when she cleans, she would take off her boots. But I originally thought Okay, I'm going to leave the boots alone and take Todd's word for it. Um, but the more I ponder this, the more that doesn't make sense to me. Partly because I talked to some of the staff there and partly just because it, when, when things don't make sense, you have to question them. I just feel that if she had just bartended a full eight hour shift and talking to the staff, they said they would clean as they went. Why would Brenda change shoes? Right? Let's say eight hour shift. Let's say tops. Tops, 30 minutes to clean. I'm going to say it's going to take her less than 15 minutes. I know it's a big bar, but it's not that crowded. Um, some of the Places weren't really being used, the dance floor, uh, the pool tables, you know, so they were cleaned already. So it's not like she's got to do a deep clean. Now, I will say that because of her cleaning background and because it's a new job to her, remember, second, third night, I feel that she would want to do a good job. Think about, well, most of you, think about the, your first week on the job did you not want to impress your boss do the best that you can you know let them know hey you hired a good person well i i do or did but maybe you don't i don't know but because of that and because of her background cleaning i think she she would have done a deeper clean maybe uh, uh, maybe spend a little bit more time on it, but she spent eight hours on her feet. Why would she take off the boots just to walk around to clean? She's not mopping. Okay. I've learned that through employees. Maybe she would mop the bathroom 
But as you could tell from some of the pictures, most of this is carpet. It seems to me, anyhow. And plus, the other employees told me that they would not, there was no mopping involved, except for the bathrooms. Would she take off those boots specifically to mop the bathroom? I say yes, that she would do that. Because, basically, because you could slip. The bathroom is, if it's tile flooring or whatever flooring, it's going to be slippery once you get it wet. It's a good Bon Jovi uh, reference. Boy, I digress. Listen, so she would. But I have no indication that a mop was even used. Like there's no indication, yeah, a mop bucket was found here. Or See, it's those small details that matter. So, if she was mopping the men's bathroom, I could see her taking off the boots and placing them there. Um, but, I asked one of the troopers that worked on this case, I said, tell me about the boots. He's like, they're as a mystery to me as they are you. Um, I think, you know, I don't like to go with guts, gut feelings, you know, intuitions. Um, I'm more of a an evidence-based guy. But with that said, if I had to go with my gut, I would say that the boots are, I'm not going to say, I would say that they... We're making a bigger deal about them than what they really are. Some people say, well, it's a calling card. The people that say that and say, well, those boots are placed there as a message. What message? You watch too much 007. You know, you watch too much NCIC or something. What message would that send? If you want to send a message, you leave Brenda's body laying right there with a bullet hole in her head. That's a message. Being ambiguous or mysterious by leaving a pair of boots in the men's bed. Come on. Okay. I think it's probably a simpler explanation. And it probably has no bearing into the case. Right? But we don't know that. That's just my my gut is we're putting too much emphasis into it. Now, I had done a video a long time ago, a year, two years ago, just briefly when I looked at this case. I didn't investigate it. And I said that the boots were a key clue. They were my key clue. And the reason being is because at the time, there was the only piece of evidence that there was, if it was evidence. Right? I would like to know who found the boots and exactly where and, like I said, how they were placed. Now, I've gotten messages from people who said, oh, you need to test the boots for DNA. And um, Although I appreciate your thoughts, your suggestions, I guess. Um, first off, it's... Sometimes people act like I don't know what I'm doing or I never thought of these things. Uh, and I find that funny. But the reality of it is you're not getting any DNA off of those boots. Well, strike that. You'll get DNA, but it's going to be contaminated DNA. So I used to have a lab where we tested DNA. And I'm talking our own personal lab. When I had my cold case foundation, I sponsored, got bought lab space in San Diego, California, had DNA expert Susanna Ryan run it for us. And like you probably or may not have saw on the hunt for the Zodiac on the History Channel, when I went and filmed us getting DNA using the MVAC system, 
on Sherry Joe Bates, Bates's capri pants. That was our lab. It was my lab. And I was a big proponent of the MVAC system. But what, what the MVAC system does is basically it shoots sterile water into the fabric and extracts any DNA that's there into a filter, and then you test that filter for DNA. The problem is, and it does a phenomenal job, and it gets more DNA than, let's say, a Q-tip swab is what we used to use. Uh, the problem is it pulls up all DNA. If you think that Brenda Condon's boots were in the men's bathroom and police detectives went in there, gloved up and said, ooh, this is a clue, and picked them up, put them in a brown paper bag, sealed it from 1991 to 2024 so we could test it today, you are the greatest of an optimist. That did not happen. Okay. What more than likely happened is the next day, a worker found those boots, picked them up and brought them out, set them on the bar. Hey, aren't these Brenda? Whose boots are they? And then somebody finally identified them as Brenda. They, after the owner touched them, after the patrons touched them, then sister touched them. And then finally to the police officer who has no idea that it may be evidence. He doesn't put gloves on. He touches them. He throws them in the back of his car, goes back to the station. And now you have 25 different DNA samples on those boots. Now, again, with my, my gut feeling is that the offender has nothing to do with those boots. So his DNA would not be on it. And I say he, I still, I guess, leave a small possibility that this is a female offender, although it's small. And the only reason I leave that open is because I have no evidence either way. Statistics will tell me that it's a male. But I'm leaving open that it could be a female because of what? Conflict in the bar. Uh, so... Oh, again, although your 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 thoughts about DNA on the boots, the reality is I, they probably never did DNA on the boots and they have no reason to do DNA on the boots. We say that, or I say that it's evidence here, but it really is just Brenda's personal belongings. But they are in a odd place. Now, one of the things that I've learned is that that the female bathroom was not in good working order, meaning it it smelled for some reason. Um, could that be a reason that Brenda put her boots over there instead of in the female bathroom? But why not put them right behind the bar? There is the group of people who want to say that Brenda had sex with somebody in that men's bathroom. Um, I think that that's a leap as well. How do I want to explain this without being graphic? Listen, if you were having a beer with me, well, when I used to drink, if we were having a Monster Energy drink or a cup of coffee, uh, I could explain this in more graphic terms, I guess. But here I like to stay professional for sure. Um, if Brenda was having sex in the men's bathroom, it's my belief and she would not even have to remove her boots. Okay? That's that's a fallacy. She is not laying down on her back on the bathroom floor. Granted, she could sit on the, the kitchen sink. I guess I don't know how it's configured. But there is another 
possession. Another way that you could and more than likely would have sex in a public bathroom so you wouldn't have to take off your shoes. There I said it in the most polite way that I can. You'll have to use your imagination because this is not only fans. This ain't Pornhub. Okay? Use your imagination. If you want to know more about that, then I guess you'll have to email me. So my point is a female, not just Brenda, a female doesn't have to take off their shoes in order to have relations, especially in a cramped, condensed, public bathroom. Okay? So the people that think that she had to take off her shoes, I think, I think you're of the wrong mindset. Okay? Enough with that. And when I say that, you know, and because of victimology, she's, she may be promiscuous, people will say, well, you can't say that. I'm tired of you saying that. Well, number one, I don't care what you think, okay? It's about truth. It's about honesty. It's about transparency. Uh, secondly, just, just because I mean she's promiscuous, that doesn't mean that I think she's hopping from one to another to another to another. No, it just means in a given situation, Meaning, when I talked to her best friend, Bonnie, and I said, would she go out into a vehicle with somebody for that type of purpose? And she said, yes, back then we would. Sure, a lot of females and males that are watching this have done the same thing. I'm trying to account for her coat and her purse being missing, meaning she seems like she could have just walked out for what she thought was going to be a brief moment because she wasn't finished cleaning the bar and she would have done that and then something happened okay what i want to try to find out is why if that scenario fits why did she go out there would it be in her character to do that so that's what I mean by promiscuous in a way. She would go out into a car to do that. She'd go out to a car for many other reasons too. It's my belief she was a drug user. Maybe not heavy at the time. Um, but that could be a reason to go out to a car. But then you have to start deducing, okay, what... Does she have to go outside for that she couldn't do inside the bar? Right? A lot of different scenarios. And we are going to, I am going to deduce those eventually where I feel, hey, this is an example. She met a guy. She liked him. He talked sweet to her. He left the bar, came back in when she was cleaning. She didn't have time to lock the door yet. And he talked her into going out to his car for with him for whatever reason. And something happened there. And the reason being that that happened is because of X, Y, and Z. And that explains this. That's what I intend to do at the end of this. So it just takes a while. It, it takes a long while, especially to get information in. Like, I thought about talking about theories today and the drug angle theory, sexual component theory, boys from out of town theory, conflict theory, all those. But I still, like I said, I have feelers out there about facts. Until I get those facts in, I don't want to contradict myself. And say, oh, well, it, it's because of this, this, and this. And then I get facts in. It changes everything. I'm not one of those people that is tunnel vision. You know, I've seen that a lot in, in investigators where they lock in on a suspect early. And they won't get off of them. And they make everything fit him. That's how innocent people get convicted. And I don't do that. I did do that once. No, I didn't convict an innocent person. But I was tunnel vision on an individual. And 
everything that was happening, all the leads, I made it fit him. I'm like, well, yeah, but it could, you know, he could have, he could have went 90 miles an hour to get there instead of 65. And if he did, it fits. That's this just, it's not how it should work. Okay. So Brenda Condon's boots. Again, I'm going to reserve judgment until I try to get some more facts in. But right now, I just have a feeling they don't they're they don't play a key role really in this scenario. Could change. You know, I remember before us remember that stripper that got a hold of me a year or two ago and was saying that this guy Rodney it was a silent partner with Carl and all this, and he had a foot fetish, and I entertained that in the video. Um, you, you have to look at all angles, okay? For sure. I am reminded of uh, David Bonet, I want to say, or something, uh, David Cram case, where a guy did have a shoe fetish, and people found the bodies, and... The shoe was placed, both shoes were placed up on top of the roof of the car or something. He had removed them. Um, but, you know, they're, I think you're talking about a serial offender, serial rapist. I, I don't believe that you have this here. And that's an, another thing that I'll address, I guess, in another episode. But I have people that keep commenting about this sketch being this guy Cruz. It's not. It's not. Okay. I identified who that sketch is. His name's Ron. He lives in Pennsylvania. I have an address for him. I have a phone call and an email into him so I can interview him. That's who that sketch is. The person that did this is not a serial offender. People think that somebody jumped off of 80 and drove back to Zion or Zion Road and did this. Is it possible? Yes, but it's not probable. The first place we have to look is inside that bar and then start working out. Um, but it's not James Cruz. Just because he dumped a body while he was going through 80... This has has zero bearing on Brenda Condon and Carlsbad's tavern. Zero. Now I can see if he stopped, went off of 80, into Belfont, found a secluded area, buried her, stopped and had lunch at Bonfatto's, went to watch. Okay, well, then I'll entertain James Cruz. But he just drove through the area and dumped the body. And because of that, people want to say, well, that sketch is him. It looks like a big deal. The sketch looks like a million people I've met. It was like the Zodiac sketch. You know, everyone says Zodiac's my father. It matches him. And these idiots from the case breaker saying that, you know, it matches this guy because the guy had scars on his forehead and the Zodiac had scars. <sighs> I get so frustrated and I don't know why. I, I, I don't know. I, mean, I try to work on it. Uh, this It's not James Cruz. The sketch looks, I, I could put an old picture of myself and maybe I'll do that for you guys. And I, I look like the sketch. Okay. Back to the boots. Okay. So until I find out a little bit more information, and I might not, I don't think the boots are going to play a key role in this. I don't know why she did what she did with the boots, but I just feel that it's not like it's, it's not an earth shattering moment. You know, that, that's just my, my thought. On this, it's not a calling card. Um, James Cruz didn't come down and abduct her, get him in the truck, pull off her boots, bring him back in, 
put them in the men's bathroom and said, ha ha, it's going to be a calling card. People are going to know that this is meant to be send a message. Or Marco, the drug dealer, who I did identify, by the way, didn't come in there and say, hey, we're going to snatch Brenda and take off her shoes and put them in the men's restroom. And then that's going to be a warning to anybody that steals our drugs. Come on. Does that make sense? All right. So enough with the boots. Just a quick episode update on the boots. If I find out more on the boots, I'll talk more about the boots. Until then, the boots are a moot point. Thanks for watching. Man's out. I got